quick reprise, the program and the manipulation of perception puts people on the postage stamp consensus and the idea is to stay there for life. Um, and what you hear all the time is, uh, you hear scientists say this, and, and you hear 24-hour you hear news presenters say this. They say, okay, uh, what we know is, about some breaking story, when, and then they, what they do when they say what we know is, is they tell you what they've been told um, is going on, but it's not necessarily the truth. And so when you hear scientists say um, what we know is, well, it's only what they think they know at that point. It's not necessarily true. For instance, um, until the 1920s, Mainstream science thought there was one galaxy, Milky Way galaxy. Now they reckon there's between 100 and 500 billion, depending who you talk to, um, in, in, the, uh, in the known universe. So whatever people think they know at any point is only what they think they know. And this is the, where we get to um, what uh, Socrates said in ancient Greece, or supposed to have done, wisdom is knowing how little we know, because your mind's always open. So this whole section is about this. How do we get there, the mass control of human perception? We suppress knowledge of self and reality. We keep from people the very nature of who they are and the very nature of the reality they're experiencing. So that way, they're in such a, such a fog of misunderstanding of the world that we are experiencing that they'll never get what, what's going on. Um, in, um, in relation to the world they think they live in. So we're going into this other level of the rabbit hole now, the next one down, which is reality is an illusion. When I mean that is physical reality as we experience is an illusion. What if all you ever knew was a lie? It sounds like an incredible question, but actually it's basically true. Um, and Leonardo da Vinci said, all great acts of genius began with the same consideration. Do not be constrained by your present reality. But the postage stamp consensus and its program is there to make sure we are constrained by our present reality, which main, remains our reality our entire lives. You mean it's not real? Well, in terms of physicality, solidity, no, it's not real. That's the scale of the illusion that we're experiencing. And if you can hold people in a belief that it is, then you've already got them in a tiny, tiny perception of reality from which you can play them like a violin which is what happens. Um, consider that you can see less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum and hear less than 1% of the acoustic spectrum. 90% of the cells in your body carry their own microbial DNA and are not you. The atoms in your body are 99.9999999% etc. empty space and none of them were the ones you were born with. Human beings have 46 chromosomes two less than a potato. The, the exister, George Bush, I rest my case. Um, how f when you look at Trump, how far are we really away from a potato being elected president of the United States? How far? It can't be long. And if he did get elected, I suppose you'd have his ships quite early on, wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, off, don't start me. Uh, the uh, existence of the rainbow depends on the conical photoreceptors in your eyes. To animals without cones, the rainbow does not exist. So you don't just look at a rainbow, you create it. This is pretty amazing, especially considering that all the beautiful colors you see represent less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum. And this is from a mainstream magazine, science magazine, called Wonderpedia magazine. Every second, 11 million sensations, bits of information, crackle along these brain pathways. The brain is confronted with an alarming array of images, sounds, and smells, which it rigorously filters down until it is left with a manageable list of around 40. Thus, 40 sensations per second out of 11 million make up what we perceive as reality. What do they say? What we know is, yeah, OK. And uh, this um, 13th century Sufi mystic, Rumi, said, this place is a dream. Only a sleeper considers it real. 
Then death comes like dawn and you wake up laughing at what you thought was your grief. And what keeps us from this understanding, and so much more that I'll get into now, is the perception we call the real world, which is the completely and utterly unreal world. And we're basically given a fake choice between God and non-existence. Either you um, are subject to some, some God imposing its will upon you, or life's a bitch and then you die and the lights go out. That's the end of it. That's the kind of choice. But there is another one, that we are a state of awareness, a state of being aware. And we can be that aware or we can be infinitely aware. It's a choice of how aware we choose to open our minds to be or open our consciousness to be. A state of being aware. And this is a quote from a Central American shaman, you know, one of those primitive people. Doesn't know what he's talking about compared with a professor at, at uh, university. Anyway, I'll just pass it on, you know, just to pass it on, you know, you know what these primitive people are like. He said, um, we are perceivers, we are awareness, we are not objects, we have no solidity, we are boundless, we or rather our reason forget this, and thus we entrap the totality of ourselves in a vicious circle from which we rarely emerge in our lifetime. And that vicious circle is what the program is there to stop us emerging from. We are all one. We hear this all the time. We are one. I agree, but what does it mean? I suggest it means that we are all points of attention within one infinite awareness. And you can have different points of attention having different experiences. The trick is to see them as experiences of that point of attention and not confuse them with the nature of who we are rather than what we are experiencing. And uh, this is a near-death experiencer called uh, Nita Mujani, the uh, author of a book called Dying to Be Me, who said, when we are not expressing in our physical body, you and I and all of us, we are all expressions of the same consciousness. I completely agree. I've been saying it for decades and decades, and yet I'm a racist, <laughs> even though I am saying we are all one and the body is just an experience. I am you. You are me. We are looking at ourselves through different points of attention. Same consciousness, different color vehicle, end of story. And if we get um, obsessed with the vehicle and self-identify it, then we can get divided and ruled, and then we think of ourselves in terms of limitation, and I can't. You are not what is in your skin. You are what is in your heart. Everything else is just detail. So, we are points of attention with infinite awareness. And that point of attention can take us back and encompass vast amounts of awareness, inspiration, insight beyond the world of the scene. Or it can lock us totally in to the world of the apparent scene. And all we are perceiving is the world of the five senses. And we are like, in form, we are like the crest of a wave in an ocean. The crest of a wave looks different. It's the white uh, froth of the wave. But it's still the same ocean. It's just a different expression of it. That's what we are, different expressions of the same infinite uh, state of awareness. And you know, when I was a kid, they, they said to me, um, this is the Atlantic Ocean, that specific ocean, that's the Indian Ocean. And I used to think, I thought, it's all the same water. Um, and what they do is give it different names, even though it's all the same water. Now, we understand that, so you know what part of the water you're talking about. But we, are, we give different names. Fred Jones, you know, Bill Smith, to different parts of the same Awareness of which we are all points of attention. And that point of attention can be all or a tiny fragment. Um, the ocean is the droplet. The droplet is the ocean. The, when you hold a, a, a droplet of water in your hand, it looks to be isolated. It looks to be apart from everything else. But you drop it in the ocean. Where does the droplet end and the ocean start? They are all the same uh, water. 
And the, this is the bottom line of this whole conspiracy to enslave human perception. To disconnect the droplet, five cents mind, from the ocean. Five cents mind from infinite awareness. Once that's done, we're in trouble. As uh, Leonard Cohen said, if you don't become the ocean, you'll be seasick all your life. And this sense of, 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 of longing, this sense of disconnection, this sense of isolation that so many people feel, and they think it's about their life in this reality, it's really about the disconnection they're feeling from the true self, the infinite self, which is what this program is all about creating. The system says you are insignificant, you have no power. The truth is, you are all that is and ever can 